Hello and welcome. Uh, this is an introduction, introduction to uh, Dr. Dan Matthews, who um, is uh, involved with Holy Divine Healing. It's holydivinehealing.com. And basically, we just wanted to get a recording of his story about how he came to do what he does and what it is exactly that he does and uh, kind of lead you up from the beginning till today. So uh, my name is Linda Sarr, and I'm going to be the host here, and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Dan Matthews. Well, thank you, Linda, um, and thank you, everyone, uh, listening to this. I'm, I'm very honored to share my information with you. And um, I was born and raised in Arkansas and um, born in uh, Hot Springs County Infirmary in a little town called Malvern, Arkansas in 1994. I'm sorry, 1954, not that young. And uh, was uh, raised in a little town uh, 25 miles away, Sheridan. And, uh, and then when I entered the third grade, my family moved to Little Rock. And then the next year across the river into North Little Rock. And I live there uh, even today. And um, I, uh, you know, went through the public school system in Arkansas, and I, I went to college at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock and lived at home with my mom and dad and worked, uh, you know, as I went to school. Back in the days of $200 a semester full tuitions, and uh, I was one hour short of getting a double major in biology and chemistry when I took off for chiropractic school and um, went to chiropractic school in Kansas City, Missouri at uh, Cleveland Chiropractic College. And, uh, and after I graduated there uh, with my Doctor of Chiropractic degree, I moved back to Arkansas in 1983 and started my chiropractic business, my journey into chiropractic, which I um, always loved chiropractic, uh, the philosophy, art, and science of allowing the intelligence that created the, our being to heal it, and it always made good sense to me. And, um, and so I did that path for about 15 years, and, and then on my last day of vacation of um, um, August of 1994, I had a heat stroke in South Alabama on a very hot, humid uh, summer day, and had a journey uh, to the other side of the veil, and I had an encounter, a telepathic encounter, with 13 crystal light beings surrounded by 57 androgynes. And um, yeah. I, it was a very beautiful experience. And uh, while in the presence of these beings, my greatest sense of awareness was how I made them feel. And and I was totally tuned in to getting good feelings back from them and them the same with me. And it was the most intimate, I'm at home feeling I've ever had. And, um, and there can, was can I interrupt that, for just a minute, Dr. Yeah, sure, um, yeah. I was just curious. Um, I know you had this extraordinary event in 94, but was there anything that you were studying before? I mean, were you... Uh, did you go to, was there a church you participated in, like, or was there some field of study or some special guru or teacher that you felt like sort of prepared you to have this opportunity? Well, um, I tell you, when I was in college, I really loved liberal arts. I had, a, you know, a big dose of science when I was there, but my passion, uh, I took world uh, religion. And it just ignited a fire in me, and I got busy studying the religions of the world, uh, from Buddhism, Hindu, the Tao, and just different ancient religions, and finally made it around to Christianity and went through all the denominations of Christianity. And, and um, I got into, um, in chiropractic school, I got into... Uh, Unity Christianity, the international headquarters is a suburb of Kansas City, and um, it uh, was very uh, incredibly helpful at that time in my life, and and then I studied the teachings of the, the three students of Emily, Emily Cady, you know, one of them being the Fillmores that started Unity, and then there was a uh, 
science of mind person and uh, seven day Adventists. And so I studied those and, you know, read the science of mind books and the unity books. And, um, and then one day I was, I was sweeping my porch off at my practice, my chiropractic practice, and a little lady with a severe scoliosis walking down the sidewalk came up to me and said, young man, you have a lot of light in your eyes. I want to give you this book. And it was a green book uh, of the teachings of St. Germain, the first book. And so I read that, and uh, I got in touch with the I Am Sanctuary and started buying the books. And I think at that time there were 17. There probably is more of them now that, I read all of those books and the teachings of St. Germain, and it was uh, just a passion of mine. I loved uh, to connect with spirit and, and read about the, the various pathways uh, to the holy. And um, about a month after I finished the last book is when I had this, this event that led me into holy divine healing, the heat stroke. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about meditation? Did you were did you have a meditation practice, or were you familiar yeah, with that at this time? I, I did meditation, and um, and I found that for me, I, I like to meditate when I'm walking, and I have beautiful places to walk here in Arkansas, and I love to meditate. I I, I get uh, messages all the time when I meditate while walking. Um, I have a a beautiful um, meditation tree uh, that I meditate with, and uh, have had some incredible journeys with that, and and um, and so I'm I'm all about uh, health and wellness, and being in harmony with the laws of life, and um, caring for others, uh, serving others, and and just having fun every day. You know, that's uh, that's what I'm about. I I, I enjoy mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. I'm um, yeah. I've got a journey, you know, to do. I wanted to, um, add, going back to your experience on the other side, um, um, you had some pretty incredible descriptions of these beings that you met. I think the listeners would like to hear about who you met and what they looked like and what, what they did with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the androgynes, um, there were fifty seven of those, and they were in a circle. And I was inside that circle with these thirteen crystal light beings. But the androgynes, they don't have the two eyes that we have. They have one right in the center of their forehead, and um, they uh, were very. Um, you know, they looked like they were picking up radar from Mars or something. They had a real spaced off. Uh, look on her face, but they were definitely connecting with the divine order as this activity was going on inside the circle. And these uh, 13 crystal light beings were flowing torsos of living colors. They had like like robe-like, real flimsy type cloth structures, but they had a torso and a head like a human. But they did not have legs. They were they were just flowing torsos that levitated, and uh, there was a, an activity was going on, and everyone knew that, and and um, and this one being that was kind of in charge of the group uh, was levitating right in front of me, but turned sideways to me, and and I was admiring its jawbone. It was turquoise and pink in like a living essence of turquoise and pink. And about the time I thought how beautiful it turned and looked me right in the eyes and zapped me with this light from its eyes into mine. And um, it was quite a transmission. And after it was done, uh, it was like I was awakened to my sacred path and I was put back in the tunnel that brought me there. And away I go and... um, and I can see the earth, and I'm coming back to the earth. And I was very uh, happy to come back to the earth because I had a wonderful gift to share with, with my brothers and sisters. And and just before I came onto the earth, the voice of the highest messenger told me, 
that all people on this earth have been put here to learn to trust in their inner holiness. And if your heart beats, it's in there. And whether you trust in it or not, it doesn't matter what you say. It's the feelings that you entertain that determine your truth. And if you're one for being critical, cynical, fearful, doubtful, um, you know, those kind of feelings, you demonstrate that you do not trust in your inner holiness, that you're trying to figure it out and do it yourself. And that always puts you under the thumb of your negative ego, and that's the path of fear, pain, and punishment. And and that is not a fun place to be. And so you you have those two choices in life. When problems arise, you either try to figure it out and do it yourself and go down the path of fear, pain, and punishment, or you be a Christed being and surrender all of the worries, problems, concerns to the higher power, which is your inner holiness. And, and that's the easy button. And that's what I was taught uh, as I was coming back to the earth. And then two days back at my chiropractic business, um, the same method that I was using for all those years being a chiropractor of extracting information from the patient's body, namely leg length, uh, 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 muscle testing, kinesiology, through leg length evaluation was the method that I was using. And and um, quite to my to my uh, surprise, I discovered that I could communicate with a person's inner holiness with the same process that I was determining the treatment of the day in my chiropractic office. So I was off and running because I was very skillful at doing the leg length evaluation, and I mm-hmm. could ask yes it, and no questions and get really you know good answers. Yeah. Um, so did they reveal to you what your mission was or what you would be doing once you returned with this newfound information and power? Well, <clears throat> what they do is they give you enough information to take the next step. And it's always about, you always have to demonstrate trusting in the holy order to get information to release at And it always is going to be in divine timing and divine order. And you have to learn how to ask questions and and not uh, get out of line, you know, uh, uh, because they don't mind leading you down a daisy trail or two if they got to teach you a lesson to keep you on track. But you know, you start from scratch with this kind of stuff. You got to kind of learn the rules of the lay of the land as you go. Mm-hmm. What what would you what would you say would be some of the elementary questions to ask yourself if someone were just wanting to get started on this? Well, uh, when I get a person on the table, uh, first of all, I, I ask their inner holiness if I have permission to work with them, and it'll say yes or no. If it's uh, yes, uh, the right leg will go short. If it's no, it'll go long. And uh, and then I I find out. Uh, you know, I have the client uh, talk about what they what's going on in their life that they want to have me to look at for them, and they'll they'll give me you know a skinny of something, maybe take three or four or five minutes to tell me, and and then I'll ask their inner holiness if it wants to respond to that or something else, and um, usually it's it will respond to what they talked about, but there'll be other things too that they haven't talked about, kind of Mm -hmm. the collateral things that go with the primary topic. And there's typically going to be, you know, about three uh, clearings, healings, ascension keys for each time I work on a person. But uh, the person's inner holiness is in full direction of the process. My, My purpose is to serve others by doing the will of their inner holiness, and it's through the process of Christ consciousness that it works. And, mm-hmm. uh, um, what I'm curious about is uh, for the person at home who wanted to do a little do-it-yourself exploration, as they follow uh, what you're calling the parable of Christ consciousness and they go, you know, they get quiet every morning, like what would be a good question for that person to ask of their own inner holiness that would... Um, 
get them going on this path. You said you had to learn to ask good questions. So I'm just curious, for people who aren't going to end up on your table or calling you and doing a long distance uh, appointment with you, anything that the person listening to this who won't ever see you but maybe only listens on these calls, um, what can they do to move themselves further along this path of uh, personal development and progression? Yeah, um, I call it learning to live the parable of being a Christed being is what gives you the big bang. And, um, and you know, it all starts when problems, worries, concerns, those kind of things come into your life. Uh, you basically have two choices. Um, the human thing to do is to try to figure it out and fix it yourself. But that's going to, you know, your yourself is, is defended by your negative ego. And we've all heard it said the ego's job is to defend yourself. Well, that's very true. And it does it by seizing control of your consciousness through the programming of the authority of your outer world. And um, that started for everybody as a young person. The big people in your life, especially the ones you hold in esteem, are going to wind up programming your belief systems. And, um, and then your negative ego is going to justify and defend the belief system it imposes on you by doling out fear, pain, and punishment. And, and uh, the, you know, the, the fear is going to make anxiety and worry. The pain will create depression or anger, and the punishment will create suffering. And that is a miserable path. And I do not recommend that path, but that's what most people do. The other option, living to learning to live the parable of being a Christed being. You see, a Christed being surrenders the problem, worry, and concern to the higher power. And that is always the divinity of life that beats your heart. It is within you. And all you have to do to pay for that in full is to yield to the will of your inner holiness. And that means follow the whispering voice and gut knowing. And thirdly, show up in your day without apprehension and worry and take your next step in trusting the divine flow of life and this will open a, a door to miracles into one's life that unlimited opportunity and possibility will come to you. And uh, really, when you do the parable, you put yourself in the posture to be shown, told, told and led in the moment by your inner holiness. And there's nothing mm -hmm. better than that. Yeah. So just to review the this um, parable... Uh, solution that you're outlining has about has four different steps and the, the yeah. trigger one trigger to get into it is when you end up having some problem in your life something triggers you and you notice oh what, you know what am I going to do and you instead of using your pea brain to figure it out you um, you um, go you get quiet and you surrender to the holy power and ask uh, you know what is what action is mine to take, and then whatever information you get, you yield to that as you listen to it, and then you trust it, and then you go into action. Yeah. So stop, feel, yeah. listen, go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know acceptance uh, on the front end. You know if you have a problem. If you will accept you play a part in it or it wouldn't be your problem, you can do something about it. But if you want to blame oh. it on outside of you, uh, you got a hopeless case. <laughs> it won't Oh, you know. right. Yeah, so you got to own it. Yeah. And, and uh, I've never seen a situation where a person had a problem that they did not pay a part of it. I mean, if you got a problem, you play a part in it or it wouldn't be your problem. And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, you're the common factor there. You're the yeah, one present yeah. in all your problems, so yeah. that could be a clue. That is, but that's, a, that's one of the problems with belief is that it runs from responsibility. It doesn't want to own its creation. It'll blame others for it. Mm -hmm. so gotcha. That's kind of thing. Um, 
I've um, I'm I'm I, I'm aware from just past stories you've told that once you got back to your uh, chiropractic practice, uh, life shifted in several ways with clients or your patients and your family, and so any, I'm just just for people who you know begin to embrace this. If I mean, should they? follow in your footsteps in some way just to give them an idea of what they might experience and any any uh, thoughts you have about how to make the process easier? Well, um, you kind of got to break yourself of bad habits, you know, when you first start this. And, uh, um, but, uh, you know, the, uh, the parable... It takes a little practice, you know, learning to do it. It's not something a person learns right off the bat, and uh, it, uh, you know, it's uh, it takes it takes practice, like learning to ride a bicycle. It takes a little practice to do that. And um, but um, if you try, if you seek, that's the main thing. And it's really important uh, if you're trying to grow spiritually. You have to get to the point that you'll accept victory over your problems more than you got to be right or win, because you're not getting both, you know. And so, it's real important that people um, understand that you got to choose victory over the problems more than you got to be right or win, because very seldom can you have both of those things. So that's a big one, and then. you know, learning to do the parable. And, you know, I've got one written on the back of my card, and people can start off with that one as an intention of the day. I train people to do that. But um, I hope that the first time they read it, there's a little bit of it that doesn't quite resonate with them because if they'll, they'll do mine for a couple of weeks, their inner holiness will tell them how to edit it to make it right for them. And then you've got your own organic parable, and that's what you go with. Um, Mm -hmm. Uh, Can they find the parable on your website? I believe it is. I believe it is on there. Okay. And so if you want to write that down, it's holydivinehealing.com. Holydivinehealing.com. And, um, okay, so... um, Back to how was life once you returned with your superpowers and um, with uh, the practice and family, well, et cetera? Uh, it's just kind of an interesting story, I think, people like to hear. Yeah, it, it was very disruptive to my life. I, you know, I, I had a knowing experience. I knew this was true, and um, I was totally compelled to follow the yellow brick road it put before me even though I got my daily bread by showing up and taking my step in trust, it didn't lay out 25 years of what the plan of of grand design was. Uh, I had to kind of work through it. You know, you have to demonstrate your trust in the holy order. Well, um, you know, I would, uh, well, just put it this way. Other people weren't as excited about this change in Dan as I was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I knew it was a good thing and work, but all the it was very upheavaling to my life as a chiropractor. It, it not only ran off patients, it put my family in great concern and distress, and a couple of family interventions. And uh, but I never wavered, and I never had any doubt in my mind. I knew this was true, and. And thank the Lord that it worked when I applied it to people's healings. Uh, otherwise, I probably got locked up, you know, for being being a nut bar or something. But yeah, um, yeah. we were talking the other day about you said that you talk about this with people who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, but with people who aren't quite operating at that. Space that you're just ordinary plain old vanilla Dan, and yeah. um, sometimes I like to say we have our infinite friends and we have our finite friends, and it's a really good idea to calibrate 
how we're operating with them so we don't just blow them out of saddle when they come around us. Well, that's for sure. And, um, you know, I tell all my clients that uh, when I start working on them, you know, just kind of, you know, don't go rush out of here telling everybody you know about this. Um, that's not a good thing. They're going to throw water on your parade. Uh, what you do is uh, you just come in and get your treatments, and they'll start commenting on how you're changing and, and, and in a good way. And, uh, and then they'll ask you what you're doing, and then you tell them. But you wait until they ask. If you do it then, uh, you'll be accepted well. They want to know, and it'll work. If you if you jump the mm-hmm. gun because you're excited, it, it won't be a good thing. Mm-hmm. So so I tell them that, mm-hmm. and and you know everybody when they uh, wake up, they're like the tiny seedling that wants to be a giant oak tree. Well, you got to go through the the growth and the steps to get there. And so you got to be protected uh, from the harshness of other people's opinions and stuff. And so you just kind of, the mum is the word there for a while until you get established in what you're doing and you're actually manifesting your divine flow and they'll see it. The people in your life mm-hmm. will notice. And, and then when they ask, that's when you tell them. Yeah, I think there's a line in scripture that says, don't cast your pearls before swine. It's like yeah. they just don't have the consciousness to appreciate. And there's, there's not anything wrong with that. It's like some people are operating in kindergarten, some are in high school, and some are in graduate school. So we don't, yeah. we don't uh, disparage a kindergartner who can't do quantum mechanics That's right. equations. That's right. Okay. That's it. Being kind to everyone is what you want to be, and you'll you'll find the people that you can open up and talk to about. But it's not going to be people that you've known your whole life. They won't accept you as a new person, and that's why I I started traveling and I got immediate acceptance, uh, and I just loved it. So I kept doing it. But when people haven't ever known you before, they accept you as you are. When they when you have a history, they'll hold you back and to what you was when they knew you better. Yeah. Well, so, prophets without honor in his own country, I believe we were told. Yeah, there's. Oh. there's I found out. You travel, you get to be the expert from afar. Yeah, yeah, I found out that was all true, and um, mm-hmm. and so so I just kind of you know I love uh, the geography, the natural part of Arkansas, and. And my family's here, and we just have the best old time. Uh, And I'm just Dan. You know, I'm just uh, Uncle Dan or Father or whatever. I'm not, you know, Dr. Dan. I don't try to be. I just just want to be in with the family and feeling the love is what I'm about with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you you can't do this all the time. You got to, you know, be a normal person some. That's a good, good blend. Yeah. Got it. Um, well, so um, what I'm, a couple of things are coming to mind for me. Number one, you know, there's a universal law of progression. It's, um, as I understand it, the reason we showed up on this planet was to grow and develop ourselves and progress to progress. there's some understand there's some lessons that we can only do while we're in a physical body and um so certainly um getting in touch with this work is is an access to progression i mean the people i've talked to who, who've had this experience certainly are what i would assess as progressed um, yeah, it's it's amazing how you can quantum leap and and um, you know these near death experiences quite often are ver- very much blessings and um, everything changes and you know just like uh, America had a near death experience on you know January the sixth and 
it's come back a different thing, and it's it's uh, a lot of people were shaken from that experience, and mm-hmm. it's going to uh, you know break the cold deep ice and a lot of the attitudes and structures that were holding us apart. And as the postulates of truth are integrated into the world, it's going to allow for a, a much better healing because the the crust has been broken by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What um, what your your comment? You know, you get these treatments, or you just hang out with this group, and you um, begin to learn some of your lessons and begin to progress. Um, what I'm what I'm also it's like what I noticed since the time I've been uh, exposed to this is life has gotten a lot sweeter. There's there is plenty of chaos going on in culture, but I feel yeah. like in a lot of ways I'm operating in the eye of the storm here. It's like it's, there's a lot of swirl around me, but I live in a really sweet space, and um, it, I feel like this, this work has allowed me to be in a, just it's live in a state of flow or expanded consciousness. And it yeah. seems like this feel-good thing is part of it. It's like we're not meant to struggle or to, you know, it's like life isn't supposed to be uh, misery and horror. But that, that seems to be one of the, it's like when I wake up and when I, when I don't take responsibility personally uh, as my small self and I turn it over, then... Um, it sort of plays into that other scripture, you know, but my burden is easy and my yoke is sweet. It's like I get into the sweet flow of life. And the other thing, I don't know where I'm I'm getting so scriptural today, but the other thing is like that business about the lilies of the field. It's like I find I don't have to uh, contract and get all tense and worry what's going to happen that uh, seeming you know, relatively miraculous occurrences um, just tend to be magnetized. So would you say that's accurate in your experience? Yeah, most definitely. And, and uh, what what you call the eye of the hurricane, I call living in the bigger picture. And uh, mm. the bigger, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and that, that lets you, um, you know, escape the drama and trauma that people that are dug in, that got their heels dug in through their triggered beliefs, you know, that dooms you to the little picture. And that's mm-hmm. where, you know, the combat zone of where the rubber meets the road, you know, is is a hard place to be. And, and I much prefer living in the bigger picture of higher consciousness so that I can see the purpose of all this purging going on and have great yeah. hope for the new holy order to come that's just right around the corner. We just can't take this stuff with us. And that's Here, really um, what all of this is about. Yeah. This makes this reminds me, you know, in the in a course in miracles has a saying in it about to live above the battlefield. So it's like to raise yourself up so that you're seeing everything that's going on beneath. And then uh, Paul Selig, in his work, talks about moving to the upper room, which is essentially saying exactly the same thing. But uh, years ago, I read a book, uh, the Michael Hand book, and they had, they had an image that was really worked for me with regard to this. And it had an image of uh, a chessboard. And on the chessboard, of course, is a little chess piece, and that being my lower self and it down there screaming i want to go here i want to go here i want to go here i want to be on that white space whereas the chess player being the one sitting above who sees the entire field of the board has the complete picture of what's going on and really knows strategically where it is that the smaller self needs to go so that's that's always been useful for me as a metaphor all right, sounds good. Yeah, you gotta you gotta get up uh, where you can see the forest from the trees. You know, if you're down too close, it's like looking at a picture with your nose up against it. Can't figure it out. Right, and I can 
I can I can make a judgment of oh this is horrible it's terrible and I can get myself all spun out of control whether but when I look and see the big picture I can go oh this is what life looks like when it's working this is just part of the process of sorting it out and teasing it out um, sometimes it makes me think of uh, if I'm going to clean my closet out about halfway through the process when I've dragged everything out and it looks like you know a bomb has gone off it's like things are looking like a big mess but if I'll just keep putting one foot in front of the other and doing and sorting then I'll have something so much better when I get finished yeah. So, yeah. Okay. well isn't that isn't that what kind of what we're going through right now on this planet is this uh, talk to us about what happened in September of 2015 and uh, how it brings us to where we are today and what's, well, what's the um, big plan here uh, yeah I, I had no idea this was going to happen and the, the day of the uh, the lunar eclipse of September of 2015, it was profound in Arkansas. It was like a total eclipse. And and normally when celestial events occur, I ask ahead of time if I've got some service I'm supposed to do. And uh, it had said no, but when I was watching the moon go totally behind the shadow of the sun, it said yes. And I had 45 minutes to figure out what I was supposed to do so I went to my to my study and um, and I got it figured out and I did this blessing and when I was done with it I saw in my third eye a switch on the dark side of the moon get switched from off to on and uh, and I heard that this starts a six-year exodus of the downfall world off of the planet out of people out of our institutions and uh, and so that started the, the thing in motion, and it was going on for a little while. I can't remember how many months. And uh, and then the political arena got, you know, going with that election, that presidential election in 2016. And, uh, and then I told, was told that Trump was going to win because he was the catalyst to purge the downfall world out of people. And, and so that's wound up what happened that, and then things go crazy for four years, um, very divisive and conflicting. And you know, I'm not saying who's lying, but I'm saying somebody is. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of conflicting going on, a lot of division in people. And and uh, but it was exactly what was needed to purge the downfall fall world. And I find and see that's the bottom three paradigms the first, second, and third paradigms, and those are realities of consciousness, of darkness, of of the human shadow world of belief consciousness. And and um, I was told that the people that love Trump were purging the first and second paradigms, and the ones that hated him are purging the third, and they're actually on the same team. It's because they got their heels dug in from their beliefs. They only see their little picture, and they value being right and winning more than having victory over the problems. And all they're really doing is purging the downfall world. And they get an A-plus. They did a great job. They're all on the same team in a bigger picture of life where you can see that. They haven't quite discovered that yet, but hopefully that's coming around the corner here. But uh, this September is when it's supposed to be winding up, and the last part of it are going to be human institutions, and it has started, you know, our government did a, a big purge here at, at uh, you know, the one six event that, that went on in, at the Capitol. And, um, you know, it, it could have, it came, it really had the best outcome that could have happened. It could have been a lot worse and taken our government in a different direction. So I call it a near-death experience of, of America. And um, it's, ca- it's caused a lot of awakening. And, um, you know, a lot of things that the conspiracy people were saying was going to happen did, did not happen. And we really had kind of a normal inauguration without all the fanfare. And, um, and so people are starting to question all that stuff quite a bit. And, and then um, um, 
but this purging of the downfall world has been the big thing to get off of the planet. This is the primary thing going on right now. And then next year, after the purge is over, the Armageddon rapture events are scheduled. And the Armageddon event is the end of the world of belief consciousness. And the rapture is a redistribution of people into eight civilizations of the new holy old earth so that people are in a true environment for their continued ascension and not have so many diverse groups of people mixed in the same classroom is what that's for. And it'll it'll mm-hmm. accelerate everyone's learning. And so and then sometime before now in twenty twenty four the apocalypse is when people have their awakening. They go from human beings of belief to holy beings of knowing and they'll get to perceive the illusions that they had bought into as being the truth and their belief as they awaken, you know. So all of this stuff is happening before we go to the new holy old earth, which um, mm-hmm. is here real real quick. And, and, and in fact, a lot of the infrastructure has already been installed for the new holy old earth, and that's what we're doing in our, in our group healings. And, and uh, we're integrating these uh, levels of divine consciousness that only function in knowing and uh, the only place that knowing comes from is your inner divinity. And the, the Christ conscious, cosmic conscious, goddess conscience, and androgyne conscience only function in, in knowing. And so to go from belief to knowing, there's only one bridge, and that's the bridge of trusting in the divine flow of life. And, and so you have to quit believing and start trusting is how you get there. And, um, and so that's what we do. We do the parable of Christ consciousness. That's the, the mechanism of trust that brings us into the holy order. For the more you trust in the holy order, the more it trusts in you, and the more it opens up and reveals itself. But to go down this journey, you have to seek, and you have to put in twice as much effort as the person trying to help you if you want the best results. Okay. okay. Um, I'd like, let's go back for a minute, if you don't mind. Um, when we, you were talking about the first, the second, and the third paradigm, um, what, uh, what, and you say we're clearing that consciousness, um, would you go over once again uh, what comprises that first paradigm and what's going away in well, um, you see, um, everyone I ever worked on has an inscription of a uh, ancient world in, in the crystal lattice of their spirit body, uh, of them being a holy being of the holy O in a 700 million year life continuum. And so we have all the records for that. And, um, and so, um, you know, what we do is uh, we heal the human shadow world where all your problems come from by first cleaning them, uh, cleaning stuff off from the future, and then we put the parts back into the divine expression of your being, of when you was a holy being, and it lifts all of that stuff off of you, and it goes down the moon portal. And that's all the shadow stuff, you know, related to the issue that your inner holiness has chosen to heal. And so uh, after you clear it... um, you put it back into the person's divinity, and then you bring it into the holy O of that person, back through the eye of the needle into the world of the holy O, and to holy O pure perfection three times, and voila, you know, shazam, they're, they're, that part of them is back into their divine expression. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. Okay. Um, What I was alluding to was, I think you said the first paradigm is like, you know, killing and the uh, war, and then the second one is politics and lying, cheating, stealing, and the third one was belief, I believe. The third third one is gossip, condemnation, criticism, self-pity, being judgmental and self-righteous, and all three of those exist in belief consciousness. That is the 
fuel for consciousness and the human downfall world is belief. It's the virus of the downfall. And Mm -hmm. uh, it's the programming of the authority of your outer world that's backed up by your negative ego is what it is. And, um, And see, life is big, and any one person will have a sliver of expertise, and it'll be what you've done your whole life. You'll know a lot about that, understand a lot about that, But if you get outside of your area of expertise, the rest of life people don't know about, well, that's the part your beliefs are about. And so it's really nothing more than your opinion about the part of life you have no knowing of. And to me, that's not really that impressive. I don't really get that impressed with people's beliefs, but I do of what they know and understand. That stuff works. You know, you can heal ignorance with knowing and understanding, but you cannot heal ignorance with belief. That creates the culture for ignorance to exist. And um, and so the human downfall world is the world of belief. And the problem with belief is it separates people because of their differences. That's why there are so many different religions, uh, of, you know, Buddha, Hindu, uh, Christian, and all the denominations within the Muslim you know, they all got different beliefs. Well, that's why they're separate. And and uh, belief also causes you to see life in the little picture. And belief, people do not embrace the responsibility of their own creation. They'll blame others. And, and see, um, your linkage of manifestation starts with your attitude. And if it's programmed by the belief of your ego, you're going to have negative thoughts and feelings. And that's going to lead to bad choices and decisions. And how that aligns with the laws of life will determine your manifestation. And if your manifestation is about pain, misery, lack, or limitation, that points to an issue in your linkage from belief, you know, if uh, belief attitude. If, you're, if your attitude is programmed from the knowing of your inner holiness, you're going to have positive thoughts and feelings and make divine choices and decisions and that's going to manifest that which glorifies your holy expression and benefits all people and makes loving feelings into life and Mm -hmm. and so life Mm -hmm. is a manifestation you really can't kind of manipulate that it is what it is but when it's not what you wanted it it points upstream that there's something you got to work out upstream but I think um, I, I heard you say before that that third paradigm of belief was actually an upgrade from the second paradigm where politics is with lying, cheating, and stealing. So yeah. it, that yeah. was the job that was taken on by the church to get us out of just yeah. the barbaric. Yeah, that's, um, that's where and, we landed after the downfall. We, we were barbarians and for a long, long time. and. And the barbarians are the beings of unbelief. And the characteristics of their action is death, destruction, killing, war, and and uh, robbing, stealing, cheating, and lying. And um, it's the world of duality, hypocrisy, and polarization. And that's a really bad place to be. And that's what religion was created for was their first step of ascension was to be indoctrinated with belief of a higher power uh, outside of them and that's a God model and then you throw in a savior with that and you've got Christianity and uh, well you actually you, you know, no responsibility let somebody else do the heavy lifting for me as right. opposed to right we're mm-hmm. we're coming up on an hour right now and um, I just wanted to say that if this is of interest to you and you'd like to explore it further, um, on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock Central, we're uh, we're having conversations with Dr. Dan. And um, my intention is to take some of these concepts that he casually drops before us and uh, have have the opportunity to go into some depth and... Uh, be educated about some of the terms. Some of them I'm thinking of the holy O 
moon portal. Would love to know more about that and uh, these six postulates of truth that will be coming to the planet and uh, the mental degrees. And you spoke about the androgyne. It's like um, we just aren't educated. We don't have the distinctions that you have. And so we're thirsty for um, the knowledge that you've been um, infused with and just look forward to having um, having an opportunity to record your lessons and to spend an hour a week to explore some of these uh, these these themes that we we learned about from you as you traveled every two months, but we, there was never time to to deeply deeply go into it and to uh, really take a good definitive look. So that's what we're looking at doing on uh, on our Thursday morning calls at 10 o'clock, 10 to 11 Central Time. And um, so if you would like to be included in that or get information, you can text your name uh, to 713-622-8900. At seven one three six two two eight nine zero zero, and if you have further, if you want to get more information about uh, Dr. Dan's work, I would direct you to his website, which is holydivinehealing.com. That's holydivinehealing.com, and on two Sundays every month. Since he's no longer traveling throughout the United States, um, he has a, an on a telephone conference that you can sign up for on that website, and you can also read biweekly newsletters there that sort of keep you apprised of what's going on right now. the um, The Sunday uh, the Sunday calls um, are charged at thirty five dollars each. And um, only because, hey, we're still here in human bodies and we have to pay the electric bill and put food on the table for our family. So this is just a way for us to uh, make sure that Dr. Dan has the ability to give his gifts and to feed his family at the same time. I wanted to also say that if you're interested in a private session, you can call Dr. Dan directly and his number is 416-1966. And that, what's that, that area code is, what is it, Dr. Dan, area code? Uh, yeah, you got, you got my number wrong. Uh, it's 501-7, uh, uh, excuse me, 501-416-1996. 1996-1996. So this area code, 501-416. 1996. That's to schedule yeah. a private appointment. And um, yeah. if you, you, if you leave him a message, uh huh. Yeah, go ahead, Linda. You See, were saying it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you leave him a message saying you want an appointment, if he returns your call and leaves you a voicemail, be sure and listen to it because he's going to give you some available times. And um, it just will speed up the process if you will uh, call him back. And don't, don't bother to send him an email or a text because he doesn't do that. Um, I got really tickled that he was told that uh, he could either be involved in the Internet and technology or he could have these gifts. It's like, uh, you know, choose one, chocolate or vanilla, choose one. So he's choosing to stay connected with the gifts and uh, about the, about the most technical he gets is he'll return your phone call and leave a voicemail. So he'll take a voicemail, and, but don't text him and don't try to email him because that dog don't hunt. Any, anything else you want to say before we wind this up, Dr. Dan? Uh, well, uh, our group healing this Sunday is 2 p.m. Central. And, uh, okay, the, the information is on the the uh, website and the, there's an Instagram blog thing on there. I, I can't even hardly talk computer. I'm, I'm like an idiot on that subject. Yeah. But, but my wife is well, pretty good. And uh, well, you can text the, her. But call me. The website's going to have, it's every, there are two of them every month. So there, uh, there is one coming up. Let's see. 
Let's it's on the 24th, uh, January 24th, 2021, in case you're listening to this in the future. But you can always go to the website and see what's going on. And additionally, if you go to YouTube and uh, put in Holy Divine Healing or Dr. Dan Matthews with one T, M-A-T-H-E-W-S, you can, you can get an awful lot of information there too. So I think we're complete here. Um, anything, any parting shots before I um, wind this down? No, I, I think we did a thorough job. It's a lot of information. You're, yeah, you ca- call back, listen to it again. Uh, feel free to invite your friends to our call on uh, Thursday mornings. They are free of charge. We're never going to charge for those. Just if, you, if you're curious and want to be fed, this is the place to come. And all are welcome. All are welcome. Okay, so we're going to say goodbye and text to 713-622-8900 if you wish to be added to the list. Thank you and have a fabulous day.